Your talent determines what you can do. Your motivation determines how much you are willing to do. But your attitude determines how well you do it. Namaskar. Welcome to PT Pointers. And in this video, we will cover major headlines of the Hindu, Indian Express and Press Information Bureau. So without wasting any time, let's start today's discussion. And our first headline is related to disqualification of legislature. And it is in the news because recently Madras High Court convicted Tamil Nadu's Minister for Higher Education in a disproportionate assets case. And now he faces the threat of disqualification from membership of the state's legislative assembly with immediate effect. Now let's learn some provisions related to disqualification. So friends, Section 8 of the Representation of People Act 1951 contains provisions which are aimed at decriminalizing electoral politics and there are two categories of criminal cases that attract disqualification upon conviction and in the first category are offenses that entail disqualification for a period of six years upon any conviction if the punishment is a fine the six year period will run from the date of conviction but if there is a prison sentence, the disqualification will begin on the date of conviction and will continue up to the completion of six years after the date of release from jail. And do you know friends, Supreme Court has the power to stay not only the sentence but also the conviction of a person. Our next headline is related to Red Sea and it is in the news because recently Prime Minister of India and Israeli Prime Minister held a telephone discussion on the escalating threats to maritime security in the Red Sea because of the actions of Houthi militants of Yemen. And in this context, US has also announced the creation of a new multinational task force to counter Houthi threat in Red Sea and the 10 nation task force named as Operation Prosperity Guardian which include navies of Bahrain, Canada, France, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, Sicilis, Spain and United Kingdom. Now let's learn some facts related to Red Sea. So friends, it is an inlet of Indian Ocean between the continents of Africa and Asia and it is connected to the Arabian Sea and Indian Ocean to the south through Gulf of Aden and narrow strait of Bab al Maddeb and its bordering countries are Egypt, Sudan, Eritrea, Djibouti, Yemen and Saudi Arabia. And do you know friends, Red Sea contains some of the world's hottest and saltiest sea water and with its connection to the Mediterranean Sea via Suez Canal, it is one of the most heavily travelled waterways in the world carrying maritime traffic between Europe and Asia. Our next headline is related to lumpy skin disease and it is in the news because recently Parliamentary Standing Committee on Agriculture, Animal Husbandry and Food Processing flagged discrepancies in government report on lumpy skin disease deaths. Now let's learn some facts related to lumpy skin disease. So friends, it is a viral disease caused by a virus called Capripox virus and it affects cattle and buffalo. It is transmitted by blood feeding insects such as certain species of flies, mosquitoes or ticks. This disease results in fever and nodules on the skin and it can also lead to death. The infected animals also start losing weight and have a reduced milk yield. And do you know friends, it is not zoonotic which means it does not spread from animals to humans. And this disease was first observed in Zambia in 1929. Now recently, Reserve Bank of India has directed all commercial banks, cooperative banks, non-banking financial companies including housing finance companies and financial institutions to refrain from investing in any scheme offered by alternative investment funds which have downstream investments either directly or indirectly in the bank's debtor company. Now, what is alternative investment funds? So friends, it is a privately pooled investment vehicle which collects funds from investors for investing it in accordance with a defined investment policy for the benefit of its investors. Now, recently Lok Sabha passed three key bills which include National Capital Territory of Delhi Laws, Second Amendment Bill 2023, Central Goods and Services Tax Bill and Provisional Collection of Taxes Bill 2023. The National Capital Territory of Delhi Laws, Second Amendment Bill 2023 aims to protect unauthorized colonies from demolition or sealing for three more years and GST Bill aims to bring certain sections of 
CGST Act dealing with appellate tribunals in consonance with Tribunal Reforms Act 2021 and Provisional Collection of Taxes Bill 2023 will give immediate effect to the changes in customs and exercise duties announced in the budget. Our next headline is related to fish production in India and it is in the news because inland fish production has shown a rapid growth from 2014-15 to 2022-2023 and do you know friends, India is the third largest fish producing country with around 8% share in global fish production and globally India stands second in aquaculture production and it is one of the top shrimp producing and exporting nations. Since the launch of Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana, the overall fish production in the country has shown an increasing trend. Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana is being implemented by Department of Fisheries in all states and union territories for a period of 5 years. Our next headline is related to New Swarnima Loan Scheme, which aims to inculcate the spirit of self-dependence among the women of backward classes under term loan and women belonging to backward classes as notified by the central or state governments from time to time shall be eligible for loan under this scheme. And for this, applicants' annual family income should be less than 3 lakh rupees and rate of interest on the amount of loan is less as compared to the general loan scheme of the corporation. So with this, let's conclude our today's discussion. Thanks for listening and for regular update, you can follow us on various social media platforms.